Well, the internet is going to grow dramatically. Embedded technology in our walls, in our shoes, in our feet, in our fingernails. When I walk into a room, I should be able to talk to the room and ask it to help me find information. What you essentially have is not just the United States and Canada and, and first world nations uh, being a part of Google and Bing and Yahoo and, and performing these searches, but you have this dramatic sort of, uh, almost like the long tail of, of the population of the world performing searches. Uh, and that's going to mean great things for anyone who can do a great job uh, appealing to markets outside of their own. But I think we're, we're heading into this really interesting gray frontier of Web 3.0, what some people are calling the semantic web, but which it incorporates these notions of artificial intelligence, AI, uh, with humans to help us better do the things we want to do. If you search, for example, for some archaeological site, they might actually return you an application that you can navigate through the archaeological site and go see it. So search can become not just the way of just giving information, but giving an entire experience. Computer chess is a very old problem in artificial intelligence, and there's lots of, of behavior we see in people that have a similar sort of flavor to it. So if you don't know how to directly compute the best move in a chess game, for example, um, the best we know how to do is to explore various sorts of alternatives. So with social search, you ask somebody a question, like, how do I find a good babysitter that I can trust? It's not going to eat all the food in my refrigerator, it's going to take good care of my kid. But it's not inconceivable that with artificial intelligence, a computer can mine all the information that's out there and answer the question like that for you. Google can actually read as if it was a human being now. So they can understand if a sentence doesn't make grammatical sense. If it's just keyword and then and the uh, is and then another keyword and something else, they'll give it no authority at all. They are probably the most successful business uh, in the history of mankind because they essentially took advertising, which historically had been a reactive uh, business where uh, uh, somebody would put up a print ad or a TV ad and ask the viewer to react to that and buy a product. And Google said, no, no, we will do proactive advertising. We will help the client find the product that they're looking for. What, what is true in marketing, and we've known that long before the search engines came on, is the impact of marketing is stronger the closer you get to the purchase occasion. So if I'm hungry, I'm much more sensitive to marketing around restaurants. Both the information provision and, of course, the marketing tactics will adjust themselves to the here and the now of the consumer uh, on a highly, highly targeted basis. There will be a segment of consumers who will subscribe to that. There will, however, be another segment of consumers who will tune out of that who will say enough is enough. I don't want to search, I want to be surprised. Um, I don't always know what I want. And so if there's always this environment where the recommendations are being made or I'm only being showed pages that are personalized to my shopping habits, my search interests, and so on, and I think that there's a whole host of opportunities and exciting discoveries we won't find because of these uh, kinds of personalization. First couple of years, definitely the first year, it was like the Wild West. Google's SEO, right on the left side of the, of the page, the majority of the page, was pretty consistent, but on the right side of the page, it was just like, just nuts. Like, you know, things like, you know, weight loss and how to make money online, things like that. And you click on it, and instead of even going to like a real site, it would just go right to an affiliate site. Google banned that. Honesty is the best policy, and it's refreshing because the internet today could be so cold. I would say that there's a tremendous undercurrent of horrible websites out there. And that's the result of people trying to game the system. And it's, it's still working to a degree. It's just harder to do. Because people are searching for information, it gives the smaller players a chance to get customer loyalty, get, get those transactions, build up that momentum. Whereas before, prior to the internet, uh, a company would take decades to build up a loyal following and really become a huge brand. I think what excites me about search is the opening up of information. And I'm a great believer that people make better decisions when they're better informed. The system should know the context in which I'm asking that question because it knows about my personality and the environment in which I am and where I am and what I've done recently. It's a world of possibilities once we open up the world to everything internet enables.